Hi, I'm Rita. Welcome, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Life Worth Reading. Today, I'm filming a very special type of video. This is an unhauled challenge that has been floating around on booktube. I'm actually not sure who the first person to introduce this challenge was, but I'm going to leave some videos down in the description of people who do these types of challenges just so, to give a little credit. But yeah, I actually have no idea who started this. If you know, let me know in the comments down below. So basically this challenge is you give yourself a set number of books, probably the oldest books on your TBR, books that you're not sure you're still interested in, and you give yourself one year to read these books. And if for some reason you don't achieve this and you don't read them within the year, you have to unhaul them. Now, I usually don't have a problem unhauling books that I have already read. And some books I do have like a special connection to that are a little bit harder to get rid of when they're gifts and stuff or when I bought them at a special place. But I usually don't mind unhauling books that I've read that I didn't really enjoy or that I don't see myself rereading. But I struggle a lot with unhauling unread books. I would definitely say that that's my weakest point. I have so many unread books and some of them have been on my shelves for years and I still haven't read them but I'm still not ready to let them go because in my mind I have the rest of my life to read these books but I do have to get serious and say that if I don't read these books within one year so I'm giving myself this will probably go up at the end of March so I'm giving myself until April of 2025 to read these books and if I don't then they have to go. I picked out 10 books, most of them because they are the oldest books on my TBR, some of them because I'm very intimidated by them and we will just discuss them and hopefully you'll encourage me to read most of them within this year. I'm going to start with a book that is probably the oldest book on this TBR and that is Trust Exercise by Susan Choi. I bought this book. I want to tell you that it was maybe 2019. Maybe. I actually have no idea. I think it might have been 2019. So it'll be like five years that I own this book, which is atrocious. And it's such a short one as well. I bought this because it just seemed interesting when I was at the bookstore and honestly National Book Award winner that kind of got me hyped and this book is about like acting students that fall obsessively in love and they have like this acting teacher and it's just about them and people say that you can't really trust what this book says because it's like unreliable narrators and stuff they say that it has like a good twist but also it has a really really low rating on goodreads a lot of people actually hate this book i think because of those aspects i think it might be like a love it or hate it type of situation and i have been scared to read it ever since but honestly it is definitely time for me to read this book like this is too many years in the making okay like it's only 250 pages i want to see what the hype is about so i'm giving myself the year to read this or it is going Next up, I have a book that I'm putting on this VR because I want to read this book so badly, but I always postpone it. I never pick this book up. And if you've been on my channel for a while, you'll immediately recognize this book. That is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. I bought this book, I want to say that it was in 2021. Like it'll be three years that I have this book and I still haven't read it and the problem is that I think I'm really going to enjoy it like this is a five-star prediction for me and I think that I'm just postponing it because of that which is honestly kind of ridiculous but this will be the year that I read Pachinko like it has to be like I keep putting it on TBRs I keep promising you that I'm going to read it and that I never do but I have to like this is the year that I have to read it this is an intergenerational story I love intergenerational stories it's about this family in Korea and they, I don't know, it says here, spanning nearly 100 years of history, Pachinko is an unforgettable story of love, sacrifice, ambition, and loyalty told through four generations of one family. And I love a good intergenerational story. I don't know why I haven't picked this book up. Probably because I think I'm going to love it. Also because it's really, really long. But I just, I have to. And I had to put this on, like, in this video because 
I just need that push. Like if I don't read this in the year, I have to unhaul it. And I really do not want to unhaul this book. I want to read it and I want to love it. And I want to tell myself, oh my God, why haven't I read this book? Like I knew I would love it. Why did I postpone it? And that's just the type of vibe that I'm going for. You know, I definitely do not want to unhaul this book. So we'll just have to see if I can finally sit down and read this one. Next up, quite similarly, I have Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. And oh my god, this book is provoking me, chasing me around, making me feel bad. It'll also be three years that I bought this book. It is also historical fiction that I think I'm going to get five stars. So why haven't I read it? Why haven't I read this book yet? Everyone knows what this book is about, but this book is about the wife and children of Shakespeare though he's not mentioned like he's not the focus of this book the focus is his wife Agnes and it's about their son who falls ill and dies I think and I've heard that it's a beautiful story I know that I'm going to love it so why haven't I read it I really need to give myself the push with this book because this is a book that I'm definitely interested in reading I just cannot I cannot push myself to do it and I really have no idea why. Honestly, please bully me in the comments to read these books because it's bad for me out here. Like, I need all the hate I can get. Next up, we're going to talk about a sequel and actually the last book in a series. And that is The Raven King by Maggie Stiefvater. It has also been three years since I did a 24-hour readathon on this channel where I try to read the entire series of The Raven Boys. Obviously, it did not work in 24 hours. I was absolutely insane to suggest that I could do that. But basically what happened is that I read the th first three books and then never finished the Gotham series. And now it's been three years and I can't remember a single thing that happened in this book. And I have to reread the whole series in order to finally finish it. I've been holding on to it. I don't mind owning all the books, but it's just it feels a little ridiculous that I read three and I just never finished. So I have no idea how the series ends. And yeah, like I really do want to reread this without the pressure of it being like a 24 hour readathon because I feel like I was just under a lot of pressure to like get the books done. And I want to reread them like feeling much calmer and I don't know, just being more ready for it and being more attentive to it and giving it the time that I think that it deserves to develop. This book, everyone knows the series is like all plot, no, all vibes, no plot. So it's about these raven boys and about our main character called Blue and she embarks on this journey to try to find this um, Welsh king who is like this kind of mythical figure that no one knows if they exist or not. It's like about psychics, it has connections with the dead, prophecies. It's very interesting. It has a lot of interesting like friendship dynamics and I really like the characters of this. I think everyone knows that this is all about the characters and has a lot of great character work and great friendship dynamics and relationship dynamics and i really do want to reread it and finally finish the series like what what am i doing why haven't i read this why haven't i finished this godforsaken series so i can close this chapter of the raven boys i don't know but this year this year until next until next april yeah it's 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 getting done I'm rereading the whole series, I'm doing a vlog on it, not a 24 hour one, just a vlog, and we are finally going to finish this one. Next up we have a book that has also been on my shelves for forever, I actually can't tell you when I first bought this book, I bought it second hand, but I honestly don't remember when, but that is The Bone Wish by Rin Chapeco, and this is actually part of a series, maybe it's a duology I think. And I no longer remember what this book is about or why I bought it, if I'm being totally honest. I know it's about this kingdom, it has necromancy in it, but I, I, mm, I don't remember. I do love the cover though, and like every fall time I tell myself that I'm going to finally read this book, I put it on TBRs and stuff, and it never happens. So I'm giving myself one year, and if I don't read it, I have to unhaul it, because like this isn't healthy at this point. It is not good for me. This book is just like collecting dust on my shelves, and I don't like that. I like to get to the books that I bought, because I bought it for a reason, right? Please let me know if you've read The Bone Witch because I feel like it's a quite underrated book and I feel like it's time of fame has already passed. So let me know if you've read it, if it's worth it. Hype me up a little bit in the comments because yeah, like this is an, an interesting one. And we also have a classic here. A classic that I bought about a million years ago and I haven't read it and that is 
Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This is probably also like three years in the making, more or less. So it is definitely time for me to read this. I do love this cover. I don't usually love Penguin editions. I don't mind them, but I also don't love them. But there was something about this cover that I really enjoyed. And I I do really want to read Frankenstein. I want to know what it's like what all the hype is about. It's another classic that I haven't gotten to yet. And as someone that really enjoys literature, it's kind of shameful that I haven't read Frankenstein. Mm. So I think it's finally time to make this happen. Please. Like I'm begging myself to finally get my shit together and read all these books. But yeah, like I actually started this one like a long time ago, like a few years ago. And I, I didn't love like the first chapter or something. So I kind of like put it down, but I feel like I just need to, I feel like I just need to really go for it. And yeah, I, I just need to go for it, honestly, and just get it done. Next up, we have a book that I've also almost read a couple of times, and that is The Fountains of Silence by Bruta Cepedes. This is a book that is set in Spain during the dictatorship, and we are following a 18-year-old Daniel and Anna, who is, a, one of them is a journalist, I believe, and this is a historical fiction. I've heard amazing things about Bruta Cepedes' writing. One of my friends has just read this book quite recently, like this year, and given it five stars, so it made me really hopeful that I'll love it. But yeah, it's just a book that I kind of bought on a whim and that I never read. But I think that it's time to finally read it. It's almost 500 pages, so that might be one of the reasons why I haven't really given this the time that it deserves. But yeah, again, like I love historical fiction, but they do intimidate me from time to time. Like it's never a book that I just pick up on a whim. It's a book that I need to psych myself up for and get myself ready for. And I think that that's just what's missing with this one. Like the incentive to finally give this one a try. We are down to the last three. And very much similarly to The Fountains of Silence, I have The Stray Cats of Homes by Avenue, A book that I picked up also a while ago, like maybe two years and a half as well. And I picked this book up because I loved the cover, first of all, and because it is set in Syria, I think. Yeah, and it's about like the horrors of war and stuff, but I didn't know at the time. I should have done more research looking into it, but actually this author is like Dutch or something and her husband is from Syria. So she does have some relation to someone that went through this and this is the true events of, like based on true events that had happened to her husband. But I really do prefer to read on voices stories when it comes to topics like this and I really should have done my research. And so I've been just, I don't know, I've been a little bit hesitant to pick this book up and to see how she deals with such a touchy subject. But yeah, like I own it already, so I should definitely just read it and see what I think. But that's why I haven't picked it up yet. Like I was a little hesitant going into it because I don't know. I just really do prefer to read own voices and I I should have looked into it whether this was or not. All right, we are down to the last two. And one of these is a mystery, I guess, a mystery series that I really want to read, a trilogy. And I do own two of the books, so it's time to get started. And that is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Honestly, I can I cannot tell you how long I've owned this. I think I've only owned the first one for a year. Like, not even a year yet. I bought it at the book fair last year, but I, for some reason, I bought the second one, like, secondhand without having the first one so basically this series is longer in the making because i accidentally bought the first one first rather than this one and yeah so it's been like two years since i've had the second one and then one year since i've had this one and it's time it's time to get this done this book is about piper and she is doing like this cool project on this murder that happened in her town and she does not believe that the person that was tried for it was actually the killer and so it's like this whole trilogy where she dives into this murder and I assume that there are other mysteries throughout 
and I don't know. It's just a very acclaimed series. I want to see what I think of it. There's also a like a television series coming out soon, which I don't love. I don't love adaptations, but I don't know. I think I should finally give this one a try. And I know how controversial the third book is, which I find so interesting. People either really love it or hate it. And I want to see where I stand. I love a controversial ending to a series. Like I, I really like that. So I'm excited to get to this one. They're a little bit chunky for like mysteries, but yeah, I really need to get this done because that second book has been staring at me for too long. And finally, the last book that I have here is one that if, if it has been less than three years, I'll be amazed. I don't really remember. But that is The Once and Future Witches by Alexi Harrow. Another historical fiction. This one mixed with fantasy because we have witches, but it's about the suffragette movements in the 19th century. And I've never read an Alexi Harrow. I really want to see what I think. I know that a lot of people love her. She has been putting out books with a great consistency and i i don't know i just want to give this one a try reasons why i haven't picked this book up yet honestly the length of this book is quite amazing this has over 500 pages yep 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 so it's quite an intimidating book to me i generally don't pick up books that long and like just a whim like oh i'm just going to read a 500 page book and that's probably the reason why I haven't picked this book up, but it's time. It's time, people. I have to read this book or it has to go because it has been rather too long. I want to get this done. I want to see what I think of it. I want to know if Alexi Harrow is the girly author for me, and that's important to know. So we're getting this done this year and seeing what I think of it. Well, all right, people. The verdict is in. We have... 10 books to read in the upcoming 12 months or they will self-destruct aka i have to unhaul them they gotta go and we have to clear the shelves for better books to come along let me know some books off of this list that you've read that you find interesting or even if you didn't enjoy them let me know in the comments down below and let me know if you would ever do an unhaul challenge like this one i've never tried it so I'm excited to see how this one goes and if I'll have the strength to unhaul any of these books if I don't read them within a year. As always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more bookish content and I'll see you in my next video. I hope you have a nice day and always remember that life is worth reading.